Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, it's a joy to come here with this blessed <clears throat> Sunday morning with our online church service. This is the Lost Pentecostal Church, the Andover District, with our online church service this morning. Broadcasting live from Studio Tidworth. It's a joy to be alive and to come your way. We welcome you and I want you all to relax and get yourselves in worship mood. Then as we get ourselves ready and uh, take our prayers, opening prayers of worship and then we'll come back to the word for the day. Amen. Our Father, this morning we thank you, we give glory and honor to you. We are grateful to you for the gift of life you have bestowed on us. We invite the Holy Spirit into our midst this morning. Now come and take the center stage because the garden of the people is unto you and unto no one else. We ask for your power and presence. We ask for your forgiveness that come and forgive us, O God, and take center stage in our hearts. Wherever your sons and daughters are gathered this morning, we pray for your presence amongst us. In the name of Jesus, pray God for your presence amongst us. In the name of Jesus, take the center stage, O God, to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. amen. At this time, we will hand over to Mama Dana to lead us in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are going to sing worship to God. We are going to worship God. For in the midst of the chaos, God is still God and nothing can change Him. So this moment, let's come together and sing, Thank you, Jesus. In the Ghanaian language, we say, Ape, 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 Mother now. Ape, we give all the thanks, all the glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen.
shall we say? And who shall go for us? And Isaiah said, Oh Lord, I am ready. Send me. Father, this morning we have come, oh God, before your throne of mercy. We have come before your throne of grace. We have come before your throne of love, oh God. We declare that, Lord, send us, oh God. For we are ready, a people prepared for you. We are ready for you, oh God, that you come and you have the praise of the worship of your own. Yea, Masu Pelikolo, Hebro, see, Parade, see, Kotobo, see, Kolobo, Stekelo, see, Kate, he Kolobo, Sonia, Mazikali, Masukita, he Kobodo, so, he broke his satana, he Kamos Yakama, Zero, he Kamoros Yakatama, see, Koto. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we magnify your name, Lord.
magnify and worship your name this morning, Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. Indeed, O oh Lord, when we look at your goodness, your love, your mercy that you have bestowed on us, we have nothing but to say thank you. Jesus. Father, we look in our God from the beginning of the year, the COVID-19 year, that there are thousands who unfortunately have passed on into glory. But for us who are still alive, the privilege we have this morning is thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That son, that son, Mama Beatrice, Brother Dixon, Elder Grace, oh Jesus, share the video. I plead with you, share it so that brothers can also be of benefit in this. Hmm. Reverend Christopher Agbenu, God bless you, Mama Yirao, God bless you. Our brother-in-law, brother Richard, also support. The mama matter. God bless you, brother. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Mama Juliet, Mr. Biney, bro. God bless you, Mama Matilda. Mama Lizzie, God bless you. God bless, God bless. Hallelujah. Mama Essie, God bless, God bless. Brother Dixon, God bless you. Yes, Lord. God bless you all watching. Thank you, Lord. Shelly God Mama Nancy, God bless you. Brother Benjamin, that's it. God bless you, Brother Benjamin. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless all of you watching. Thank you, Jesus. Mama Dana for such a great time of songs and worship in the presence of God. You see, with the mama of the house in the house, you can see that the glory today is at another level. Uh, and today I have been able to manage to put myself in order. No diverting from the key. <laughs> I didn't uh, divert from the key. Well, I'll leave it to her to mark me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it's a joy to be present with you. Yesterday, Saturday, we had a very great time. Had a great time on our teaching on eschatology. Yes. It was such a great time and by the time we finished, the Holy Spirit took over. We were worshiping the Lord. You know, 
yesterday's worship, if you are a student of the scriptures, Apostle Paul was, was one time caught between earth and heaven. He was caught between whether to, to die there and then and go and be with the Lord or to remain on this earth and still be of a blessing to the church. He was torn between. He said, I desire that I'll be with the Lord. I desire that I'll be with the Lord. And that is how I felt yesterday when we were worshiping, talking about the end times. As we worship the Lord and the Spirit took over, I felt like I'll be with the Lord at that moment. But as Apostle Paul said that, it will also be good if I remain with you a bit in the flesh to be of help to you. So Apostle Paul went through that struggle. It was a great time of worship. I want to invite all friends, brothers and sisters, Saturday mornings from 9 a.m., we pray for the first 20 minutes and then the rest of the time we do Bible studies. And I've started a teaching on the end times, eschatology. It is very important because there are so many confusion that is out there. Especially in the search of this COVID-19. And in more so with the news of upcoming vaccines. People are confused. And none other but the Christian body is confused. Is a vaccine containing the 666? Does it contain the mark of the beast? This is the fear of the Christendom for many. Brothers and sisters, the mark of the beast, 666, the rapture, Jesus' second coming, is it true? As I showed you yesterday in Peter, Peter said that, he wrote it by the Holy Ghost down that, Others will come and they will say that this Jesus, that people are saying he's going to come. Where is his promise? Where is he going to come from? I showed it to you yesterday in the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, people will make mockery of God and of the name of Jesus, including unserious Christians, unfortunately. Saturday, I invite you. Join us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning we want to continue with the topic that I started. And as you know, I love to teach the word of God undiluted. The topic on your screen. Your race according to your ability. Your race according to your ability. Hallelujah. Amen. Your race according to your ability. Now, we started from Hebrews chapter 12 and that is still the main thing or the main scripture. It says, Seeing that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside everything that hinders us and lay off the sin that so easily overcomes us and run the race that is marked out for us. And last week I said that to each and every one of us, a race is being marked out. And we looked at Matthew chapter 25 last week, 14 to 15, where he said that Jesus said, The kingdom of God is like a man traveling on a long journey. And then he called his servants. To one he gave five pounds. To another he gave two pounds. To another he gave one pound. Now the five pound, the one, the two pounds, and the one pound are the races marked out for each of them. Then he said he gave them according to their several abilities. According to their several abilities. Hallelujah. Amen. I underscored the very important point. And 
as the Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth, I made a point that one of the problems for many of us, especially the pastors, elders, ministers of the gospel is my problem, our problem is that I who have been giving one pound instead of focusing on working with that one pound for God, I rather turn attention and look at somebody who has five pounds. Should that be my business? Should that be my focus? The answer is no. Now that is what we do. And I said that it is wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, your ability determines your race. Your ability determines your race. And so what is ability? Ability is the means by which you do something. The enablement to do something. The where we are, the capability, the capacity, the facility, the power, the preparedness to do something. That is the meaning of ability. So, your ability determines your race. Interestingly, in the scriptures and in the context we are looking at this topic, you don't determine your ability. Hmm? You don't determine your ability. Again, you do not also determine your race. You don't determine your race. Let me take it again. Your ability determines your race. You don't determine your ability. You also don't determine your race. Even though your ability determines your race. So who then determines your ability and then your race? God. The parable Jesus gave, he said that the man gave one seven five pounds to another two pounds to another one pound. According to their several abilities, how did he know that these are their abilities? Because he is the one who created these servants. The type of clay he used to create each of these servants, it is he, the creator, who put the abilities in them severally. To one, he put the ability to be able to, uh, to handle a 500-member congregation. To another, he gave the ability to be able to handle a 20-member congregation. To another, he gave the ability to be able to handle a 50-member congregation. Jesus said, the master seed, small as it is, the smallest amongst all the seeds, when it is sold and it is scattered for it says it will bring forth fruits. And listen to how Jesus puts it. It will bring forth fruits in a hundredfold, in a sixtyfold, in a thirtyfold. Jesus, why? Why hundred and not all hundred? Why some will bring forth hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold? As far as Jesus is concerned, according to their several abilities, they will bring forth these fruits. The one who brings 30-fold is not less important to the one who brings forth a hundredfold according to the message of the creator, Jesus. Hallelujah. So he knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. According to our several abilities, he gives talents. He gives gifts. He gives skills. He gives wisdom. He gives knowledge to do what we have to do for him. He is also the one who marks out the race. So to one is the race of worship and praise. So that one, the one who is marked out and is given the ability to lead worship and praise, when that person is present, you can see the difference as you saw today. The difference is clear. Now, the one who did the praise and worship, if you are to put her into the shoe of the preacher, I believe, no, 
she will not be able to deliver as maybe some will deliver. According to the ability, the creator marks out the risk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. So God is the determinant of our ability and our risk. He carves out our race for us according to the strength, the ability, the, cap the capacity he has deposited in us. Hallelujah. And I'd like you to share this message so that people can benefit from it. Now, every race or every competition has rules. Hmm? Every race and every competition has rules that govern the race. It has rules that govern the competition. Every race has rules and competitions that govern it. Boxing has rules that govern it. Golf has rules. Cricket. Cricket in Ghana, we call cricket in Ghana Chaskele. They came and borrowed a chaskele from us and then refined it and they call it cricket. It's the same thing. We call it chaskele in Ghana. That is what they play in Europe. But, but they call it, they change the name into their language, cricket. We call it chaskele. You throw the, the milk thing into the basket, small basket. Ours is even, even more difficult than the one they play here. Hallelujah. Chaskele or cricket has its rules. Table tennis, name all the games, athletics, running. Each of these competitions or races have their rules that govern it. Hallelujah. Now to win the prize in the competition, you need to compete according to the rules of the game. <laughs> to win a prize in the race, to win a prize in the competition, you need to compete according to the rules of the game to compete according to the rules of the competition. Hallelujah. You need to compete according to the rules of the competition. Mm. And I want to take a scripture reading. Mm. Thank you, God. I said to be able to win, you need to compete according to the rules of the competition. So every rule, every race has its competition. Yes. Second Timothy chapter 2 from 5. It says, similarly, if anyone competes in in athletics or let me take it again similarly if anyone competes as an athlete he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules <laughs> hallelujah if anyone competes as an athlete if anyone competes as a boxer if anyone competes as a footballer as a table tennis player, as chaskele player, or as a cricketer, he says you cannot win the cup, you cannot win the medal until you compete according to the rules of the competition. Brothers and sisters, to each and every competition, there are rules. There are rules that govern the Christian dog. There are rules that govern the body of Christ. So the body of Christ, if worldly competitions have rules that govern it, he says that you cannot win unless you compete according to the rules. When they are all running, going forward, towards a particular goal, towards a particular object, you can run faster than all these people backwards, opposite direction and you are the loser because you have not competed according to the rules of the competition when you break the rules you can finish first 
but you are the last because you have not competed according to the rules. Indeed, you'll be declared disqualified. You'll be declared disqualified. You do what they call, you hit below the belt. You know, boxers, when they are boxing and they mistakenly box the testicles of the opponents, it is against the rules of boxing to hit below the belt. If you continue to do that, they will deduct marks for you. If you continue, you'll be disqualified from the competition. So, brothers and sisters, to each competition, there are rules. There are rules that govern our Christian walk with God. There are rules that govern us. There are rules of the gospel. You don't live anyhow and expect to get to heaven by living anyhow. No. In fact, unbelievers, for them to achieve their evil agendas, they put themselves to the rules of the competition. We as Christians, Apostle Paul is saying, 2 Timothy 2.5, that if you compete in a competition, you cannot win unless you compete according to the rules of the competition. To the rules of the competition. Hallelujah. Amen. To win, you must compete according to the rules of the competition. To compete by the rules of the competition requires training. Hmm. It requires training. Mm -hmm. It requires training. To compete according to the rules of the competition, it requires discipline and training. Discipline and training. Brothers and sisters, that is why when you go through and you go by the rule and you are last and somebody breaks the rule and is first you are honored who is last by going by the rule honor and respect is given to you even though you were last you competed by the rule you were last you are more honored than the one who broke the rule and cut short the corners and became first. That person will be declared last. There are rules. The rules requires discipline. It requires training. Training. Requires discipline. It requires training. Training and discipline. Now let's look at something in 1 Corinthians 9. First Corinthians 9 from 24. It says, Do you not know that in a race, you see, the apostle keeps talking about race, too, and he this race thing is talking about our work of faith. He's not talking about Manchester v Liverpool. No, he's using the word race to teach us as an example. It's an analogy he's giving. And the people of his day, because there used to be a lot of amphitheater where they used to go and perform, so when he uses these vocabularies or these words, it makes sense to them. The same thing makes sense to us today. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize. Mm -hmm. All the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Run in such a way so that you can get the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. Mm-hmm. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. Think about Cristiano Ronaldo. When everybody has finished training, 
he has his own place where he goes to extra training. David Becker, those days he used to say, burn it like Beckham. The banana kick, give it to him. No player has kicked banana kicks than that guy. That is all he can do. It got to a point that go, uh, uh, coaches had problem with have finding antidote to his free kicks. Any free kick the guy takes, if he doesn't score himself, somebody will hit it and score. So tricky and dangerous kicks from David Becker. Now, he says he does training with the ball time and over and over and over again. Now, these are guys who receive crown that they will die and it will perish. In fact, thieves even break into the homes of some of them. They steal the crowns. The kind of crown, the kind of price we are talking about is salvation. Who can steal your salvation? Except you give it out yourself. Through sin. Through disobedience. He says they compete for crown that will not last. But we do it and compete for a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. Apostle Paul is talking. He says the cause of his striving for the gospel is not a mad person. Brothers and sisters, the fact that I am crazy for God, hey, you see it as I'm being crazy for God. Indeed, everybody is crazy for something. But I choose to be crazy for God. The same way somebody is also crazy for the devil. Somebody is crazy for drinks. Somebody is crazy for vice. Somebody is crazy for fleshly and worldly things. But I choose to be crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah. He says, I've not run like an aimless man. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body. I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Hallelujah. <laughs> it says I put my body under subjection. I discipline my body. I fast. I pray. I seek the face of God. When others are eating banku and fufu bear, you are fasting, seeking, praying the face of God. Brothers and sisters, we have to end the year from 26, 27, 28, 29, 30th, 31st. Six days of fasting and prayers to end this year. It is coming up. Gear yourself up for this spiritual important exercise. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul speaking. Brothers, run the race according to your ability. The race of faith is not a hundred meter one. It is a long distance one. You need perseverance. Run it according to the ability given to you. Don't look at somebody else. Focus on that which God has endowed you with. If it is one soul that God has called you to save, if you go about doing every other thing to make a name and you are not able to reach out to that one soul, you are a failure before God. Before the world, you are a successful person. By the sight of God, you failed. Which one will you accept? God or man, I prescribe God to you. Pursue the approval of God. Put your body under subjection, under discipline. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to pray this morning. Begin to pray this morning. Yes, Lord. Begin to pray this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Land my 
feet on higher grounds, Jesus. The Bible says, surely the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Is the name of the Lord on you? Depart from iniquity. Yesu Christo di e dausu and ye jani free bonimo. Lord, plant my feet. Oh, ah, ya. Oh God, begin to pray somebody wherever you are. Maso katalaba. Oh yes, Lord. Masa katalaba. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Jesus, come true for us, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God, oh Russia, your daily. Strengthen us to serve you, God. Let our feet, let our feet on high. That ground is Jesus. That ground, that foundation is Jesus. Resting, oh God, on you, Lord. Jesus, masoka maseke telebo. Li komo sitala broni a masuke te. Li broki satala. Li komo do sike te. Azuki a kele raboskiya. Li koso ba telebo. Li brosi tabaha. Kendele mala masu tabaha. Le kalo brosi a tababa. Le koso daba. Le keso tababa. Li komo do skatabaha telebo. Ya agra. Press on. Apostle Paul says that I leave behind those things that are behind and are back. One thing I do, I strain myself by pressing on to the upward goal, to the upward goal that I may lay hold of the prize for which Christ apprehended me. Oh yes, Lord, that I will lay hold of the prize of the mark for which Christ apprehended me. I will lay hold of it. Yes, Lord. Nothing wavering, not giving up, not giving attention to the distractions of God that are bound in the world. Yea, pressing on unto the goal, pressing on. Temptations will come, trials will come, troubles will come, disappointments will come, appointments will come. Yea, headaches will come. My brother, my sister, your eggs will determine your achievements. Yea, your babies will determine your blessings. Yea, your crisis will determine your crown. Yea, your distraction yea, will determine your deliverance. Yea, your enemies will determine yea, your elevation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, pressing on, Pastor Joseph. Let go, pressing on. Yay. Yes, Lord. Waxing on for Jesus. Waxing on for Jesus. Waxing on for Jesus. Ah, It's time for the communion. Hallelujah. Jesus. The Bible said of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, taking it from the verses 17 downwards. The Apostle Paul speaking and writing about communion to the church and to us, therefore, that when you come together, it should be for a good cause and not an evil one. It should be for fellowship, not for division. It should be for love not for factions. He said in this, since you are divided, I praise you not. He said that as we come before this very holy element, we should look into ourselves. For we cannot take communion in a disrespectful manner. If we are so disrespectful in the world, when we come before the Lord, we should appear decent 
and ceremoniously clean. Oh, hear, O Israel, for the Lord your God is one and is holy. Therefore, thou ought to be holy, says the Lord. Father, this morning, we have come before your throne of mercy. Oh Lord, we ask that let mercy roll down from your mercy seat and visit your mercy upon your sons and daughters. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Forgive our sins. In the name of Jesus. And prepare us, O God, as we dine with you this morning. In keeping with Revelation 3.20, that you behold, you stand at the door of our hearts and knock. If we will open unto you, you come in, you dine with us, and we with you. Father, this morning, we are ready to dine with you. I pray over these elements, declaring prayer over it by faith, that it is transformed into the body and of the blood of Jesus, to give us strength where we are weak, to give us healing where we are sick, to give us life longevity, where we are faced with premature death. I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for these elements. Blessed it, O Lord, and cleanse it for our holy use in Jesus' name. Amen. Mama. Now I want you to open the wafer. Wherever you are, if you have communion, please join in with us. All the members of the church have made available communion to you. So please join in. Wherever you are, if you have communion at home, be in a clean mood and join in with us. The Bible said on the night before our Lord went to the cross, while they were eating, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he said, take and eat. My body broken for you. Brothers and sisters, take it and eat it by faith. In the same manner, the Bible said that he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he passed it to the disciples after drinking and he said that, drink from it, each of you. My blood of the new covenant poured out for your forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Take it, the blood of Jesus poured out for you. to pray. Begin to pray this morning. Begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. This morning, we bless your name this morning for your presence for the gift of life we are giving to us the opportunity to die with you this morning we are thankful and grateful in the name of jesus oh lord thank you lord thank you father we give glory and honor to you in the mighty name of jesus thank you lord for taking away our sins of god for taking away our place of death and giving us life and life longevity in the name of jesus thank you lord thank you father yes lord Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, brothers and sisters, on our screen or on your screen, you can see our prayer lines. We'll be praying tonight. We have a problem with the prayer line, even though I've displayed it. So we'll be going on the Zoom. We're going on the Zoom. And for our Zoom, 
details, I will display them for you. Check Zoom ID. We shall be having our midnight prayers tonight. 1 p.m. this afternoon, Sunday school for the children. And 6 p.m. the youth service. Youth service. So please take notice. Friends, wherever you are, you are invited. Every midnight, Sunday we pray. Wednesday, midnight, we pray. Then Saturday, 9 a.m. For the first 20 minutes, we pray. And then the rest of the time, up to 10.30, we embark on Bible studies. We have started looking at times of the end, or eschatology. Eschatology, teachings on the end. The confusion out there. Please, I want to invite you to join in. For it to be of a great blessing to you. Come and be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you in the name of Jesus. We shall soon be taking leave of you. We want to we thank you for today thank you for your presence amongst us thank you for your word unto us that we don't determine our abilities neither do we determine the race you are the determinant of both you determine our abilities because you are the creator God 
We also determine our race. God, it is you who carves out our race for us according to our several abilities. Help us, O oh God, to focus on the race marked out for us. Thank you, Jesus. As we go through the week, go ahead, O oh God, with us. Go ahead of us, O oh God. Deliver us, O oh God. Bring forth healing to the nations of the world. Above all, I pray that we shall look forward to the coming of the Lord. We shall not be deceived by people as Apostle Peter said, that people will say that where is the promise of the second coming of Christ? Since the beginning of creation, since our fathers died, there's a talk of the second coming. Where is he? Father, may we not be deluded by this delusion. We will be focused on the promised coming of our Lord. Beyond and above all that we prepare ourselves, you said that we should live godly and holy life in order to speed up the coming of the Lord. Lord, this is our prayer. Help us, O God. Anybody struggling in any area of sin in their lives, the devil that is, 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 is determined and is bent to, to destroy somebody's faith, Father, we also pray this afternoon and stand in the gap and snatch such a person from the devil's hand in the name of Jesus. Deliver that person, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your presence in Jesus' name. And now the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his countenance to be lifted over you. And his, his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord bless your water and your bread. The Lord bless your returning to bed and your rising. The Lord bless the works of your hands. The Lord bless your harvest. Above all, the Lord go ahead of you and favor you and your family, both now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. We say bye to you for now in Jesus' name. Amen, Amen and Amen.